choosing between radiotherapy and surgery for organ confined and locally advanced prostate cancer is a complex, deeply personal decision. It involves understanding the stage of the disease, patient health, lifestyle considerations, and potential side effects of each treatment. Both treatments have similar long-term survival outcomes, but differ in their risks, recovery time, and side effects. This video aims to provide a comprehensive, evidence-based overview of both options to help patients, caregivers, and clinicians make informed choices. We'll also incorporate data from recent studies and guidelines from reputable sources such as the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, NCCN, American Urological Association, AUA, and European Association of Urology, EAU. Organ-confined prostate cancer refers to cancer that has not spread beyond the prostate gland. It is classified into several stages. T1C. Cancer is not visible on imaging and is found incidentally on biopsy due to elevated PSA. T2. Cancer is confined within the prostate and can often be detected via digital rectal exam or imaging. T3A. Cancer is extending to the outer capsule of the prostate and may be microscopically invading it. T3B. Cancer is invading the seminal vesicles, making it locally advanced. Each of these stages can be managed with either surgery or radiotherapy, depending on individual patient factors. Once the disease extends beyond the seminal vesicles or into lymph nodes, treatment strategies may shift toward multimodal approaches. Several factors influence whether radiotherapy or surgery is more appropriate. 1. Urinary symptoms. Prostate enlargement can cause significant urinary symptoms. Weak stream, urgency, frequency, and nocturia. Surgery, radical prostatectomy, can alleviate these symptoms by removing the prostate. However, post-surgical urinary incontinence is a risk. Studies show about 10% of patients experience some degree of incontinence, with approximately 1% developing severe incontinence that may require further interventions like an artificial urinary sphincter, radiotherapy, while non-invasive, can initially worsen urinary symptoms. Patients are often started on androgen deprivation therapy, EDT, for three to six months pre-treatment to shrink the prostate and improve symptoms. In some cases, a TURP, transurethral resection of the prostate, may be performed first. Two, patient age. Age is a critical factor. Most centers prefer radiotherapy for patients over 75, as it avoids surgical risks. For younger, healthier patients under 70 to 75, surgery is often favored for its curative potential and precise pathological staging. However, age alone isn't decisive. Overall health and life expectancy also matter. A fit 76-year-old with no comorbidities may still be a surgical candidate. Three performance status, evaluated on a scale of 0 to 5, where 0 is fully active and 4 is completely disabled. Surgery is typically reserved for patients with performance status 0 to 1. Radiotherapy is more suitable for patients with mild to moderate functional limitations, status 2 to 3. 4. Overall health and comorbidities. The ASA, American Society of Anesthesiologists, SCORE helps gauge surgical risk. Class 1 represents healthy individuals, while Class 3 or 4 represents severe systemic illness, often considered high risk for surgery. Cardiovascular health is particularly important due to the impact of ADT on heart health. 5. Inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. Patients with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease should avoid radiotherapy as it may trigger severe bowel inflammation. This is considered a strong contraindication to radiotherapy. 6. Previous radiotherapy. If a patient has received pelvic radiotherapy in the past, further radiation may exceed safe dosage limits and lead to complications such as bowel damage, urinary strictures, or fistulas. 7. Cancer stage and extent. For T1 to T3A, both treatments are generally effective. For T3B, radiotherapy is often favored 
because it can target both the prostate and seminal vesicles more comprehensively. In T3B cases, surgery may still be used as part of a multimodal strategy, followed by adjuvant radiotherapy based on pathology. For example, if there are positive margins or extracapsular extensions. Advantages of surgery. Radical prostatectomy. 1. One-time treatment. Typically involves a one to two day hospital stay, followed by recovery at home. Most patients do not require hormone therapy unless the cancer is aggressive. 2. Precise diagnosis. Allows complete pathological analysis of the prostate to confirm grade and stage. This helps guide decisions on whether further treatment is needed. 3. Salvage options. If cancer recurs, salvage radiotherapy can be effectively applied to the prostate bed. This is harder to do the other way around due to post-radiotherapy scarring. Disadvantages of surgery. 1. Surgical risks. Risks include infection, bleeding, rectal injury, 1% incidence and anesthetic complications. 2. Incontinence and erectile dysfunction. Postoperative incontinence affects 10% of men. 1% may experience severe leakage. Erectile dysfunction rates range from 30 to 60% depending on age and nerve sparing technique used. Advantages of radiotherapy. 1. Non-invasive. Avoids surgical risks and recovery. Performed on an outpatient basis. 2. Lower incontinence rates. Only about 1% of patients report urinary incontinence post-radiotherapy. 3. Better for older or less fit patients. Especially beneficial for those with comorbidities or limited life expectancy. Disadvantages of radiotherapy. 1. Longer duration. Standard treatment is 20 to 39 sessions over 4 to 8 weeks. Shorter, hypofractionated schedules are emerging. 2. Requires hormone therapy, ADT, is often started three months prior and continued up to two years for high-risk cases. Side effects include hot flashes, fatigue, weight gain, loss of libido, mood swings, increased risk of osteoporosis and cardiovascular events. 3. Salvage surgery is challenging. Post-radiotherapy tissue fibrosis makes salvage surgery more complex and risky. According to a 2023 SEER database review, the five-year cancer-specific survival for localized prostate cancer exceeds 98% regardless of treatment modality. The PROTECT trial, Hamdi et al., NEJM 2016, found no significant difference in prostate cancer-specific mortality at 10 years between surgery, radiotherapy, and active monitoring. Recurrence occurs in 10 to 15% of patients after either surgery or radiotherapy. Ultimately, treatment decisions should be individualized, ideally through a multidisciplinary team, MDT, involving urologists, radiation oncologists, and medical oncologists. Tools like the CAPRA score, Gleason grade group, PSA level, and MRI findings should guide risk stratification and treatment planning. Conclusion, both radiotherapy and surgery offer excellent cancer control for organ-confined and locally advanced prostate cancer. Your choice depends on your age, overall health, urinary symptoms, cancer stage, and personal preferences. Always discuss your options with your care team, ask about side effects, and consider a second opinion if needed. With the right information and support, you can make a confident, informed decision about your prostate cancer treatment.